This is QD Clinic, stills or not QD Clinic is Room Now's attempt to discuss cases from the clinic and the lessons therein learned. Today's case is a 21 year old male who comes in for an FUO evaluation. This gentleman comes to see me in 2008. He's had four month history of fevers and rash and arthritis. I was fortunate enough to actually have a diary. I'm going to read you this first entry into the diary. Sunday, May 2008 was the first day I felt sick. I woke up and noticed a mild rash on the tops of my hands and the inside of my forearms. I also had a very mild sore throat. Three days later, I felt slightly worse, had body stiffness and back and neck pain, and the sore throat was worse. I went to my PCP who gave me a Z-Pack. By uh, seven days later, I was having chills and sweats all night with a fever. There was a light rash on the top of my hands and palms. And at that point, I went to an urgent care doc who wasn't sure, but he guessed this was probably fifth's disease, maybe a parvovirus B19 infection, and did blood tests which showed very high IgG levels and a sed rate of 90. He went on to say that his fevers would occur at night, last from 11, to 4 a.m. would begin with shaking chills and then fevers and then he would defervesce with a drenching night sweat. He often had to change his bed clothes. By 6, 7 a.m. he was exhausted and would usually sleep up to four hours and not wake up until around 10 or 11 a.m. But then when he woke up he had morning stiffness of an hour or two he had muscle and joint pain, especially his quads, hamstring, neck, and back. His wrist hurt badly. His ankles would lock up. On uh, A few days later, he was given prednisone by his PCP, 20 milligrams BID, and he felt much better immediately. However, a few weeks later or two weeks later, he was hospitalized for three days. He was seen by two infectious disease specialists and had many tests but the only abnormal tests were consistently a very high set rate of greater than 120, white count of 19 to 25. He was anemic, his albumin was dropping and went down as low as 1.9. He had negative tests for rheumatoid factor, ANA, parvo B19, ANCA, chlamydia, numerous blood cultures. He had um, in the hospital nightly fevers of up to 103. And, uh, and he, when he was given steroids, he got better. And as such, he was discharged on 60 milligrams of prednisone a day and doxycycline. And their diagnosis was that he had serum sickness. By June, they were starting to wean his steroids. And then he noted the return of fever, going up to 102 plus. He was having back pains. He was given um, celecoxib and acetaminophen. That didn't seem to do much for the fever. He saw two rheumatologists who had multiple diagnoses and he was sent to me to arbitrate. Again, repeat lab, te lab testings done two, week, two months into the illness showed a negative ANA, a negative SEL70, SM, RNP, SSA, SSB, double strand DNA, all negative. Complement levels were very high. C3 was 235. Cardiolipin antibodies, ASO, SPOP, SPEP, all negative. Cryo, Hep B, Hep C, EBV, all negative, chest CT was negative, a skin biopsy from the abdomen, both a, a rash area and a hive area showed perivascular and interstitial mixed inflammation with dermal edema. He had a bone marrow biopsy three months after the onset that showed a hypercellular marrow, increased iron stores, negative fish and negative flow cytometry studies. A CT of the abdomen and chest was normal and PET scan showed lymphadenopathy in the abdomen, pelvis, and inguinal region. A lymph node biopsy was done, showed reactive lymph node changes with moderate effacement of architecture, but no evidence of neoplasia or infection. So again, um, this is sort of a, a typical story um, and he comes to me wanting to know what this is. He has no significant past medical history other than recent sh shoulder shoulder surgery and some irritable bowel syndrome. He's of Italian, Croatian, and German heritage. He's single is with his parents, no drugs, no pets, no foreign travel. Um, and his review systems for the last several months has included weight loss of over 20 pounds, subjective fevers, weakness, fatigue, nice sweats, joint pain, joint swelling, myalgias, tendonitis, back pain, nodules, rash, abnormal nails, sore throat, tinnitus, anorexia, 
constipation. When I see him, he was afebrile, uh, had no rash on that day. He had normal vital signs. Uh, there was no lymphadenopathy in the neck or axilla or groin. Uh, chest and heart exam were normal, and there was no evidence of a paddle splenomegaly. On joint exam, he had three swollen joints, elbow, knee, and wrist. He had six tender joints, PIPs, elbows, shoulders, knees. His CDI score was 21, same as a rapid score, same as my gas score, um, meaning he had active arthritis. He did have a nodular swelling at the intersection of the right calf and uh, the gastroc and the Achilles tendon. There was no deformities, there was no uh, ankylosis of the wrist, but he did have some uh, flexion contracture in the left elbow, lacking 30 degrees of full extension. So, Stills disease or not, you've been playing along. Does this sound like the last several cases we've seen? Where does this go wrong? Was the fever high enough? Was it described to be typically quotidian? Um, were the labs in concert with what you'd expect? I said he did have Stills disease. And in fact, if you go through the Stills diagnosis calculator on stillsnow.com, you'll see he has 12 points. Uh, based on spiking fevers, an evanescent rash, urticaria, polysynovitis, myalgia, sore throat, leukocytosis, a high sed rate along with a high white count, hyperferonemia, anemia, hypoalbuminemia, and seronegativity. So yes, he had Stills disease. He had been treated only with steroids. When he came to see me, he was only taking 2,400 milligrams of ibuprofen. We put him on a full dose of um, Nebumatone, 1,000 BID, gave him Tylenol uh, for other aches and pains and started him on Kinneret. And that was in 2008. Um, he did well immediately and was then followed by his rheumatologist uh, in California. So yes, this was Stills disease. Tune in for more on Stills Now.